Hello and welcome back to Homeschool Together Curriculum Reviews and we are covering today Math Mammoth Grade 2 where we're going to cover a printed off digital version. So this is something that um, is really cool with Math Mammoth is if you've seen my earlier review on Grade 1, you'll see that there's a printed books and we had workbooks in hand. But also available with Math Mammoth is a digital option and this is what I've done here. Been able to print off the workbook put it into a three ring binder and go ahead and run, run wild with my math curriculum. That's a really great way if you're thinking about saving money. There's bundled options with Math Mammoth, anywhere between 40 to $60 depending on the reseller. Um, but through Math Mammoth, you can download digital versions of the curriculum. I find that to be extremely helpful because if I have multiple years, multiple children, multiple age groups, it definitely pays for itself having that digital copy that you can print off um, as well as Maybe my learner wants to redo a section or maybe my learner has to do redo a section because the mastery just wasn't there. Um, so this is really important for me to have digital copies. I, I love that as an option uh, with your family. So adding on to grade two, we're gonna be expanding with addition and subtraction. We're gonna be getting up to the hundreds place value. We're touching a little bit on multiplication at the very end. Uh, our idea of doubling, we're gonna do graphing, measuring, um, we're going to be covering a wide range of clocks and time and, 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 and continuing on with the layering of what we had in grade one and just expanding that. Um, one thing that I like about Math Mammoth is it's a mastery based education program, math curriculum. It's a complete curriculum. It's definitely something you can have as your go to curriculum. Um, it's wonderful when it's printed. That's super easy to put into your workbook, into your travel bag especially when you need to be on the go, especially if you have a lot of children uh, or a larger um, a homeschooling family here um, that you may not have enough time to do the really hard one-on-one -on -one work. The workbooks are there to help you. Um, the way the curriculum is laid out, the way the, thing, uh, the concepts are pr presented, it's definitely great for a learner who may need to do a little bit more curriculum on the go or curriculum on their own time uh, where mom or dad may be helping another student um, they need to go ahead and do their math work. I like the more independent method here with, with these workbooks. So if you have a chance, continue on. We're going to take a look down into the curriculum now. All right, so here we are with Math Mammoth printed off in a one inch binder. Cool little thing. I just always print off the top page, toss it into the top. This is a great way for you to store this over a long period of time, prep it later so you can just pull it out and go, oh, that's right, that's Math Mammoth grade two. So first workbook. Um, I have actually here most of it uh, printed off. So this is obviously the loose leaf paper, uh, pages here um, for the curriculum. I've had them three hole punched. Um, and then I also have the printed off answer key as well. So obviously you can get all four of the books, the A, the B, the cumulative tests, the test and the cumulative test, and then obviously your answer key. Um, when you're buying the digital version of this, you get them all. So I, you, it, there's no really, um, no reason to get you know one or less. You just get the whole curriculum for that grade. I think that that works out just fine for me. Um, at the beginning of every curriculum, let's see, I have it starting on page 90, but I have my first few pages here. Um, as you can see here, we we removed some pages. Well, why did you do that, Matt? Well, when we did this curriculum, I found I had to go on travel. We went around, we were on travel, and we were homeschooling on the road. Um, and I I had my daughter start the curriculum, and you know by the time we decided to go. Um, we had already done the first 90 or so pages, so I just took them out. I found that to do both A and B workbooks, I needed probably an inch and a half binder, maybe almost a two inch binder. So the one inch binder works well if you're just working on like one of the workbooks and then you have the other workbook and maybe like a manila folder ready to come in. Um, so obviously we went ahead and did that, um, took out half, the, half of it so we didn't need to travel with that. Obviously we have some you know, old and new. There's a nice, the one thing that I like about um, Math Mammoth is that they, they don't just throw you in the fire. There's a little bit of review, a little bit of um, kind of walking you back into the curriculum. Uh, we homeschool all year round, so we never really take any days off or breaks or whatnot. Um, for us, we just go right into it. So sometimes I skip the review and I just have her start uh, with whatever she's doing. Obviously here we're talking about clocks and time, addition and subtraction facts within uh, zero to 18. Um, moving on from there, we have regrouping of addition and geometry and fractions. Really helpful there uh, to get go ahead, go ahead and get started there. Let's see if I can pull up. Yeah, we'll just hop into chapter one. So obviously at the beginning of every chapter, there's a nice little forward from a Maria Miller, the creator of Math Mammoth, kind of welcoming you and giving you an idea of kind of what you're going to be getting into. 
And then we have obviously the first page here, which is chapter one, nice little summary here of what you're gonna be covering, as well as a deeper breakdown um, page by page of what type of math concepts you're going to be covering. And then obviously there's other helpful resources on the internet, helpful now that I have the digital copy, you can just click on the blue link and go to the website. Um, if you're trying to work with your daughter or son um, on trying to learn a little bit more, maybe there's a concept they're struggling on, um, Math Mammoth has provided you links to, you know, kind of expand and, and, and build on that. Now there's obviously no manipulatives here. It's nice to get an abacus and they recommend getting some, maybe some tiles and things of that nature just to, you know, drive home concepts if you're trying to teach something that maybe is a little uncertain. Um, but obviously here, some review. This is picking up from where you left off on grade one. Um, but here we go. We have some, you know, obviously simple word pro simple uh, math problems, addition and subtraction, um, using dots as ones and t's as tens and, and whatnot. So bringing in that idea of place value. As I talked about earlier in the earlier reviews, um, something that I, I, I like to do is about two to three pages a day is typically my learner's limit um, when doing that. And that can take anywhere between, I don't know, 20 to 30 minutes. Or if your child is having a, an interrupting day, it may take a little bit longer. I wouldn't try to, I would try not to go any longer than that, um, especially if you're doing math, you know, on a daily or every other daily day basis. I tend to do three to five days, three to four days a week. Um, and periodically on the weekend, if mom is sleeping in, I'll sneak in an extra page or two uh, when nobody sees. <laughs> um, but we do homeschool all year round, so we never really have that pressure of trying to like get everything done in the 180 days, um, like in a school year. So we tend to have, we have the, obviously the whole entire calendar. And I find that getting this curriculum done in like a three month, four month period should not be difficult. Um, for a learner. Now, obviously we use Math Mammoth as a, a finisher for our second grade curriculum. So we've done a math curriculum and then we do Math Mammoth again to drive home that mastery and to give that practice, that repeated practice of, you know, learning uh, of what the problems are. And I like the fact that there's a lot of problems to do. And again, as I said, kind of in my earlier reviews, there's a lot of opportunities to draw, to draw out the reading. Um, very important, especially when we get into those older years when we need to do um, standardized testing or some type of state testing. We're not gonna be there to help them. They're gonna have to be able to read these problems and understand what's going on. I do like to use the curriculum as a training method to, for that. This is very similar to what they'll see in not you know one-to-one -one with those tests, but it's not um, a, a, curric a math curriculum that is manipulative heavy, learning concepts in a collaborative way. This is more um, what they may see on those type of standardized testing, and I like it for that reason. A lot of, obviously, a lot of practice. We're teaching doubling here, and so on and so forth. More word problems, and you can see as, as the curriculum gets more and more complex, as the years go up, you're gonna see more and more complex uh, word problems. And I don't like to skip those. I do about 70 to 80% of them. Um, just depending on what my learner is feeling that day, I might ask her to just do one or two of them and then, okay, you can skip out on the next two as long as you got those two right. Definitely want to gauge that. I know word problems can be a little exhausting um, because it's like you have to think conceptually, but it is the moment where the math begins to make, meet the re reality and I like it for that reason. Isabella got 30 books out of the library. That sounds like a homeschooler and read about half of them in two days. That sounds like another homeschooler. How many of the books did she have left to read? So obviously doing some simple math. I, I like to have the idea of like write down the information that you're, you're getting from the problem and then what is the math problem that we need to, we need to do? So I try to drive home those little bit of uh, math concepts along the way, subtracting whole tens. So there's a little bit more of a visual aspect of like crossing out things. I do like that as well. If you have manipulatives and you wanna do some additional problems and I have found myself at times having to say, okay, you really didn't get this concept. Let's go ahead and pull out the legal pad. I'm gonna create a couple new problems and I want you to do a few extras. I, I have found myself doing that from periodic, for, periodically. So don't feel like you can't do that. Um, that is definitely something you can do is bring in some additional problems. And I think on Math, Math Mammoth's website, they do a great job of providing you some additional, you know, learning opportunities of generating problems as well, if you find that you need that. So continuing on at the end of a chapter, here it is, good example of that. We have the review. So very often there's the review and sometimes there's a test. In this case, it's just a review. And for all intents and purposes, you can treat this 
as the test if you're trying to do some type of evaluation. Now with respect to you know, doing the reviews and the testing, sometimes there's like a two page review and then like a two page test. I will have my daughter do it on one day, do the review and then do the test on the second day. Or if she gets like 100% on the review, I find the review and the test are almost the same problems. If you get 100% on the review, I'm not gonna make you do the test because essentially you just did the test. Um, when I do do the reviews, I do offer a little bit more support, a little bit more help. Um, and then if she's struggling a little bit, then I go ahead and I'll have her do that test. But if it's if a concepts that she really understands and she knocks it out, I don't make her do the test. I have her just do it once and that's a good enough evaluation for me. Um, for for this for and then if you want to do additional more obviously you with the digital download you get the additional tests and obviously there's the cumulative tests as well you don't have to do those they're nice um, I find them to be helpful if you say you're doing some reporting and you would need to have something a little bit more concrete if you do want to create a testing environment obviously this is second grade I don't know how much of that we want to we want to ram home in second grade but especially with my daughter um, getting that third grade level. Um, and you get in that fourth grade level, you're going to have that standardized testing, cultivating that ability to sit and take a test um, may be needed. So you may want to start to, you know, kind of do that slowly over time. Obviously, once the, the test is over, here's the end of chapter test. What I did is because it's the digital version, you can go ahead and just print off the end of chapter test and then slip it in at the end of that chapter. That's kind of a nice thing to do, especially when you have the digital download, you don't have to hop between books. You can actually just go ahead and put that right there at the beginning. And here, obviously, I incentivize correct answers with lots of dino stickers and fun things like that. Um, Two-sided, two uh, one-sided test, so very simple. If you're going to start doing testing like this, try to keep it low pressure. Last thing you would want is to have your learner to be really stressed out about the test. A lot of times I'm just, you know, kind of blasé about hey, today's the test and test is no big deal and I don't treat it like a big deal and you shouldn't treat it like a big deal either. Obviously, I do do a little bit of scoring because that's something she wants. Again, I think I said it before that if she gets the wrong answer, I just indicate that it's wrong and I give her an opportunity to fix it. If she gets the right answer, I give her half a point. So something that you can think about um, in the way you want to grade. Um, I like to incentivize going back and fixing your mistakes. Here we are in clocks. Obviously we're doing a little bit of time. Uh, time was something that my daughter really struggled with. So we had to do a lot more kind of unit study stuff about time. And I don't think I did the whole thing. Um, there is some writing involved with time, uh, especially when you start writing numbers, especially the larger numbers. There's a little bit more writing and reading. My daughter was a little bit more advanced in her math and a little bit more challenged with her reading. So I had to kind of, uh, um, account for that. I, she just didn't have the stamina to have to write that every single time. So I say, okay, at this level, it's not a big deal for me. Um, you don't have to write it. Just give me the right time. And that's more important of the skills that I want you to master right now. I don't want you to have to be stressed out about writing and reading when I'm just asking you to do math. Again, that's something you will have to gauge as the instructor on what your child is willing to do um, with respect to those skills. Okay. Going a little bit further, just to give you a little bit more deeper idea, here's chapter eight, regrouping and addition and subtraction. Obviously the introductional, uh, introductory chapter is there as well. And you can obviously see we're starting to get into higher place values for both our addition and our subtraction. Um, learning those skills, obviously we're starting to do carrying. We're doing three numbers here, um, keeping it within the, the hundreds place as the answer, but beginning to understand the idea of, of adding multiple numbers together really helpful. There's a little bit of uh, visual representation of hundreds, tens, and ones. You'll see this kind of universally across a lot of curriculums, kind of that square line dot as a way to kind of visualize the numbers. Um, I found that to be helpful. You will see the puzzle corners throughout the, the book. They can be a little tricky for, for a learner. Um, they're helpful, allows them to really, you know, get the brain noodle uh, uh, firing. Um, but sometimes, you know, my, my learner may not have the stamina that day to do it. So I go ahead and just skip it. It's okay for me. Uh, you can move on and, and not have to worry about it. Um, new concept here. What I like about Math Mammoth is very often um, anywhere between two to four pages is the concept. And they do a good job at giving you the title of that, giving you an example of what you're gonna be teaching and then going ahead and, and allowing your learner to do that. But they're kind of broken up into those concepts that are, as, as we saw at the beginning, they are outlined at the beginning of the chapter here. 
and you'll see those as the headers and you see how they break that up every about two to four pages is a new concept. So you can almost think about doing your, your homeschool, uh, you know, how much you're going to commit to that day based on how many pages you want to do. You may say, okay, today's just, we do a whole concept in a day, whether it's four pages, or may you say, Hey, my, my learner can only do two. Okay, good. These are two days of work, two days of work. Oh, three pages. My learner can do three pages in a day. That's one day. So you can just start thinking about how many days you're adding up along the way. Obviously digital curriculum has the links as well, but you can see here, I've gone ahead and I'm, I have the, you know, essentially the whole curriculum here in a binder. Maybe I need a little bit bigger binder, um, but you can do that. Obviously manila folder for the answers as well, but essentially a great curriculum. So thank you so much for taking the time to take a look at my digitally uh, purchased uh, printed off edition of Math Mammoth uh, Grade 2. I love this curriculum um, for its mastery focus, um, giving a lot of practice, a lot, a lot of practice can be really helpful to our learners when working through those math concepts. And I like using it. I like using it as a review. Um, I, I te we tend to move through it in a couple months. It's very fast. It's very smooth, very simple. It's you know, well, well loved across many homeschooling families. And you'll find, um, you'll find this, these books in this curriculum pretty much anywhere you look. Um, I love the digital printing options, especially if you're a cost conscious family, or if you're a family that is thinking ahead like, oh, I've got three or four learners that are going to be doing all these curriculums. It would be nice to just have the printable versions. I can just print them and put them into the binders for whatever student I have. That's a great way for you to go, especially if you're on the move or if you're traveling, if you're going to be spending um, time deployed somewhere or something of that nature, having the curriculum ready to go and, and on, on the move and lightweight um, is a great feature for a lot of homeschoolers. So Math Mammoth, grade two, can't go wrong.